Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. Guess what, folks? It's already starting. I don't know about you, but I'm sensing a little bit of a red wave. I'm sensing a huge political shift. And not just in America, but frankly across the Western world. You're even seeing elements of it in South America. You know, it's like I always say, change in politics takes time. You know, I think a lot of us expected after 2020 that there would be a massive shift considering all the civil liberties issues, the economic issues, inflation and whatnot. And it was a pretty frustrating experience when it felt like it wasn't really happening. Well, fast forward a couple years, boy, does it feel like it's happening. Here is the first piece of evidence Evidence. We have one of the biggest political shifts I have witnessed in my lifetime. And no, that is not an exaggeration. I'll be able to quantify that later in the video. As the governor's mansion in Louisiana flips from Democrat to Republican in an epic landslide victory. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so here's a little news segment. Just for context, here's the morning news that people woke up to in Louisiana. I thank you for joining us and welcome to the morning after election night throughout last night. Night. We brought you the latest results and kept you up to date on all the candidates. We begin with Jeff Landry, who is now Louisiana's governor elect. News 10 Britt LaFosso spoke with Landry moments after he took the win Saturday night. This is absolutely huge, folks. It's huge for a couple reasons. Firstly, because the Republican that won was a Trump endorsed candidate. You know, for all the talk lately that Donald Trump's a detriment in election season, that his endorsements hurt candidates in these races, I think this pretty much disproves that. Trump endorsed candidate Jeff Landry wins by more than 25 percentage points over Sean Wilson, as you can see here, getting 547,000 votes to Sean Wilson's 275,000. This was such a resounding victory in a field of 14 candidates that that they didn't even need the second round of voting. Usually the first round is going to be a crowded field. You get the top two finishers and then you'll get round two, then a one-on-one -on -one election to seal the deal. But in this case, Jeff Landry's lead was so big that he ended up passing 50% support and that canceled the need for a second ballot and he just straight up won it. Now, some people aren't aware of why this is so significant, why I'm so animated and hyped up. It's not just the isolated victory, it's the shift. Three years ago, this was the news. Here's a video released by CNN titled Louisiana Democrat Governor Defeats Trump-Backed Businessmen. Now let's head to Louisiana. CNN projects Democratic Governor John Bell Edwards has narrowly won re-election, beating out Eddie Rispone, a Republican businessman backed by the president. CNN national correspondent Diane Gallagher is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So, uh, Diane, wondering what the reaction is there. And good morning. Good morning, Christy Victor. Yeah, so here's the thing. John Bell Edwards, a Democratic uh, governor here in Louisiana, reelected. And I am looking at two different things here. When we spoke with voters yesterday, we started to notice this split. Those who were Trump voters who also were John Bell Edwards voters. I did ask a couple people how they kind of uh, how they how they were OK with the fact that the president had had two rallies in just the past 10 days at that time trying to get the vote out for Eddie Rispone. And yet they were still voting for the Democrat. They simply said that Trump was wrong about Louisiana in that case. They still plan to vote for him in 2020, but he wasn't right in this case. Also, it's turnout. When you look at parishes, you look at New Orleans, the turnout just from the initial October primary until yesterday soared in places like New Orleans. Uh, the the African-American vote, uh, heavily African-American cities started to increase in that area. So perhaps Donald Trump's uh, perhaps Donald Trump's visits to, to Louisiana may have impacted the vote in a way that he didn't expect. And in the 2019, November 17, 2019, Democrat John Bell Edwards narrowly won re-election. And this is what the election map looked like. Pretty blue, right? Decent amount of blue districts. For a state that votes Republican in the general election, kind of surprising, not really what you're used to seeing. Usually you'll see little pockets of blue, mainly big cities, then a sea of ruby red. This? This is a pretty competitive map for Democrats, at least in the governor race. Well, this time around, it was a little bit different. This is the election map. Starting to see where I'm going with this, huh? Now, that is ruby red. In fact, there isn't even a light red parish in sight. The dark red color signifies a massive Republican lead well within the double digits. And double digits is really the story of the day. You know, I wasn't exaggerating when I told you in the intro. I've never seen anything this extreme to this extent. Let's just take a look at some of the election results from these parishes, contrasting the 2019 election to the 2023 election. If we take a look here at the top left of the map, we have Cato Parish, 
Back in 2019, John Bell Edwards won by, quick math, I think it's roughly 16 percentage points. Well, Cato flipped Republican for Jeff Landry, where he won at 48% to 35, winning by 12 points over his Democrat contender. That means that this parish alone went from negative 16 for Republicans to plus 12. That's a nearly 30 point shift. And we're seeing that everywhere. Here's West Feliciana Parish. In 2019, Democrats won by roughly 13 points. Fast forward today, Jeff Landry won by 21 points in West Feliciana Parish. That is freaking insane. And of course, cue the leftist copium. So I tend to watch what happens in three states very closely. Louisiana, because it's my home state. Texas, because it's my current state. And Florida, because so goes Florida, so goes the South. And what happens in the South usually leads to what the GOP does at a national level. So when we see things like Louisiana reports low voter turnout, not gerrymandering, not voter suppression, but low voter turnout, it's really sad. Because sometimes people have warped memories. Remember this man, Bobby Jindal, when he was the governor of Louisiana? I was an undergrad. And he won the election. And shortly thereafter, we started to see medical facilities disappear and a rise of prison facilities in the state of Louisiana. We started to see education, healthcare, jobs, you name it, all of these sources for people to do better in the state of Louisiana get cut. That low voter turnout not only handed over the governor's office, but they now have both houses with Republican supermajority. So they have a trifecta in the state of Louisiana of GOP members being able to control the lawmaking body and the law passing body of the state. In 2016, the state was voted the worst place to raise a child. It was the worst in education. It was ranked one of the unsafest. It was the worst place to find a job. And a lot of that had to do with the repercussions of someone like a Bobby Jindal being in office. And y'all put Jeff Landry in there. This is beyond disappointing. And I'm worried. Now, of course, ridiculous framing aside, at the moment Republicans take over, everything goes to crap. And I mean the audacity to mention education. Coming from a Democrat, I think I'm going to disregard everything I heard there. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is I don't want to get distracted talking about policies or track records because Governor-elect Jeff Landry doesn't even have a track record yet. That conversation, in my view, is completely irrelevant. What is relevant, however, is what this young woman said at the start of her video, specifically the part about voter turnout. Democrats didn't show up to vote. That right there is what we've been talking about, friends. That is what wins and loses elections. And all the data we've been analyzing thus far has suggested that there's an enormous gap in voter enthusiasm between Democrats and Republicans. In other words, Republicans are extremely enthused to show up to the polls while Democrats aren't. This right here may be foreshadowing for what is to come. Republicans showed up in mass and Democrats stayed home. You know, people can cope about this election all they want. At the end of the day, you know what won? Messaging. Democrat messaging has been so awful the last two years. I mean, what have they done for the last two years in terms of their messaging? They've done nothing but pat themselves on the back, essentially praising themselves for a non-existent economic recovery that never happened while people are suffering. And when they're not doing that, they're dividing the country, attacking MAGA Republicans and talking about Trump nonstop. Trump hasn't been in office. He's literally not not relevant, but Democrats have poured so much focus into looking in the past, coping, lying, pushing propaganda, basically anything but formulating a coherent campaign strategy and messaging strategy. Meanwhile, Republicans are focused. Border, immigration, inflation, economic issues, and it's obviously resonating. Folks, it's resonating everywhere. We are seeing shifts towards conservative politics across the Western world. The one example I keep bringing up is just north of the border in Canada, where we're seeing a very similar political shift 
shift. In the last roughly six months, the Canadian Liberal Party, headed by Justin Trudeau, went from tied with Canadian Conservatives to down 10 points in the polling aggregate. It's like I keep saying, if left-wing socialist dystopia Canada is shifting conservative by double digits, then most likely there's something to this trend. Florida's a red state and it seems like the South is following, just as the woman in the video suggested. I guess at this point the question is, can it be stopped? I don't know. I don't think so. I hope not. I don't think it's naive of me to say this, but I'm hoping that we're moving towards a conservative age of greatness, one step at a time. And this right here, it's one of the early steps. A huge, resounding landslide victory. The DNC and the DCCC, I pretty much guarantee you, are panicking. That's what I got for you guys on this one, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you on the next one.